important doctrine there is. We are speaking of matters too great to fully comprehend, to fully, to understand fully God would be to have a mind equal to God. Nonetheless, God has spoken in ways to help us know him truly. So we turn to his word, the Bible. Before our speaker el elucidate us further into the mystery of the Trinity, let me tell you a short anecdote about two close friends, Berto and Ali, working in an office. Obviously, Berto is a Christian and Ali is a Muslim. They were taking their lunch break when Ali asked Berto a question. Why do Christians believe in three gods? In Islam, we only have one God. Very confusing. Like our organizational setup here in the office, three vice presidents. We have one in finance, another in operations, and in the field, in field. Like your Trinity, why? Out of the blue, Sean, one of their office mates, interrupted their conversation and joined them on the table. Sean announced before making a bite on his burger, hey guys, did you know that VP1 is on vacation? What? Ali responded, alarm written on his face. He continued, whatever happens to our bonus? My wife and I are going to Paris for vacation. Did he sign our checks? Berto answered in his widest green. Ali, no worries. VP2 and VP3 are co-signers and they are here. Berto continued uh, talking with a wink. By the way, Ali, that also answers your problem with Trinity. <laughs> so biblically, our speaker will tell us more what is the three-in-one triune principle that Ali found so confusing in the anecdote. So right now, uh, please uh, join me in welcoming Pastor Ben to the pulpit. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, when I say good morning, it's from British Columbia. It's 8.03. So for the next 25 to 30 minutes, I'm going to tell you the biggest, greatest mystery that no one have ever explained properly, if I may say that, because this is something that I think should be, must be, a lifetime journey of trying to understand who God is, the Holy Trinity. When this was given to me, I have to admit, I got scared. I got scared mainly because in my ordination about six, perhaps seven years ago, my paper on the Holy Spirit or the Holy Trinity was returned to me twice for not being sufficient enough in my understanding of what it is. The third one was finally accepted with regards to the sentence, it will be my lifetime journey in trying to understand the Holy Trinity. Now this morning, perhaps one of the greatest mistake I will do with you is try to explain it and put a dot and says, this is it. Because what I'm going to express to you is my journey on trying to understand reasoning. Someone said the Trinity is beyond reason, but it does not mean it goes against reason. Millard L. Erickson, perhaps one of the greatest biblical scholar that influenced my life. And this is what he said about the Holy Trinity. This is who God is, what he is like, how he works, and how he is to be approached. Let me say that carefully because he himself did not put a conclusion of this is it. He simply expressed on what the Trinity is trying to engage with us. And he said, and I repeat, who God is, what he is like, how he works, and how he is to be approached. You see, in the past, and I'm not going to stand in front of you to criticize any pastors in the past 
who stood and perhaps you listened to it as well, who used the analogy of comparison using eggs, pencil, water, and me sounding like Nescafe this morning, three in one. Because that's what I chose as a title for you. Again, being influenced by Miller Erickson himself, entitled that part of his book, God's Three in Oneness. And so three in one is what I would like to give to you this morning. You see, whenever we go to mysteries, especially with our faith, in my journey, what I always do is I always direct my point of attention on where is this heading? Because if I'm going to doubt it some more, will I stop or will I quit learning this because I simply did not understand it? And so this morning, if I could give you something worthwhile with the three in one or the Holy Trinity, you may want to focus it in the area of relationship. That is personally from Pastor Ben. I simply would like to connect it, my relationship with God, my relationship with others, my relationship with nature, and my relationship with everything else that God created around me. You see, in my 25 years of trying to understand this, 30 years of being a pastor, I'm still, and I'm still, you can quote me, and I'm glad this is being recorded, that I'm still scratching the surface of this mystery. Perhaps this will be a journey that I'd be taking in my lifetime. And so when I am welcome in the heavenlies, the first question I'm going to ask is, please give me a sentence to clarify the Holy Trinity. And so this morning, I'd like to express to you that in the areas of hard to understand faith, specifically the, the Holy Trinity, it made me, it made me, please hear me out, appreciate it more. The ongoing relationship I have with God. You see, whenever I go to this Holy Trinity, the three in one, I always compare this to my 28th year of marriage, 28 years. I have so many things that to this day, I'm only learning with my wife. And I think she's the same with me. I enjoy and I desire more of her rather than putting my mind into the focus on Man, what a wasted 28 years. I still don't get you. What a waste. I don't like this anymore. I don't even entertain that. I don't go to the area of the 28 years. Imagine I'm still trying to learn who you are. Because I keep finding out that not understanding my wife, my kids, the church, and more of the Lord Jesus Christ is harder than not knowing them or denying or quitting or divorcing them. I found that harder. And so in my journey, I appreciated it more because as I've alluded, it is harder to live life without God, without my wife, without God, and without my calling to who I am today. To this day, there are so much mystery, so much of the things that I stand in front of you that I go, wow, I still do not get it. And this is something that I'd like you and me to start in the very basic of trying to get this into our mind. You see, not 
understanding the Holy Trinity will make things a lot more difficult. For instance, Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. You're going to have a very hard time understanding that if the Holy Trinity is something that you have started denying. The mindset of the king but became a servant, treated and died like a criminal to save me, defeated death. He is coming again. He rules and reigns today, and he is with me today. See, those are basic of Christianity, but all of those connects to the Holy Trinity. So what I will try this morning is to establish to you today, and you can quote me, the basic biblical truth of what the Holy Trinity is. The reason I have chosen to you a passage, Genesis 126. It was read for you. Now let me pray before we go ahead and look at the scripture. Our Father, help the one who stands before your people. He is so fragile. He is so limited. And so in my human way possible, trying to construct an idea for the last two weeks. I pray that you will be the one who will divinely reveal to your people who you are. I can only reach as far as their two ears, but you're the only one who could go deeper to their mind, down to their hearts, and so it will help us speak, it will help us move. Because the Holy Trinity, yes, it's a mystery, but it makes us move even today. It makes us alive even today with its restriction and limitations and death around us. The Holy Trinity, its mystery, allows us to reconnect that Jesus reigns, rules, and the Holy Spirit speaking loudly of it, of the peace that passes all understanding. Help us, help me, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so Genesis 1.26 is, is a passage that was read for you, and I'm glad it's been read to, from the translation of ESV, and this morning, a close show, uh, a close a close translation of that is the New King James Version as well. And so it starts with this. So God created man in his own image. I'm waiting if you're reading it with me because that's not verse 26. That's verse 27. And some of you were agreeing. So let's go back again. I'm just waking you up. One 26 is our passage. That was verse 27. We will use that slightly this morning, but 126 goes this way. Then God said, perhaps the three of the most powerful words that you will hear, because it's God speaking. And then those two words, let us, the three distinct qualities of God written down. And if you would continue reading throughout Genesis, chapter 1 to chapter 50, all the way to Revelation, I'll bring to you the first letter C, because I'm going to bring you three C's of the basic biblical truth this morning. The first one, the consistency in its reasoning consistency. The word let us, the words let us, the three distinct qualities of God were always, always consistent, moving as one, engaging as one, exchanging as one. That's something that you need to hold on to. If I'm going to express that to you in a detailed form, we will be here until next Sunday 
and this will still be our topic. So I'll give to you as much as I can in my humanly possibly, humanly constructing this. The consistency level of the three in one was always moving as one, engaging as one, and exchanging as one. God the Father, when it was said, let us, the three in one at work, God the Father, the creator of all is the Lord of all. Sending his son, God in Jesus Christ, lived, died, resurrected, went back to heaven and coming again. And today he is God in the Holy Spirit in a real person beside you, inside you, talks through you today. That's so hard to grasp in one Sunday. But that is the consistency that, that, that those words gives us. Let us make man in our image. The three in one began in creation. The three in one began in creation. And their consistency from creation all the way to revelation, if it's not something you believe in, you will have, you will have a difficult journey trying to embrace the beauty of the Trinity because you have failed to embrace the beauty of creation. And so it starts from the very beginning. When you embrace the beauty of creation, this is perhaps the most beautiful beginning of a journey of trying to understand the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Trinity, I mean. And you will find that its consistency in its reasoning from Genesis, from creation all the way to revelation. And may God divinely reveal it to you. Somehow, when you hear an explanation and a trying to express this to you. You really need to go to the area of God, help me. Because pastors and teachers alike will only go as far as giving you knowledgeable things. But unless it's divinely revealed to you by the presence of the Holy Spirit himself, it will be hard to understand. This is something that you need to hold on to because when you believe of the Holy Spirit today, Jesus in the New Testament, God the Father from the beginning of time, when you are able to hold on to those three and working as one, the journey has begun. But deny one, you're denying the three. Quote me, deny one, you're denying the three. Refuse one, you're refusing the three. Someone said, try explaining and it will lose your mind. But try denying, it will lose your soul. Connecting is something this connection from our mind to the heart, that is probably the hardest part of Christianity because we could go on and on and learn something. And unless we have come and accepted and desired and love it, it will still be nothing. That consistency needs to happen. That's my first C. The second C that I would like to give to you this morning is, actually it's CC, creation connection. And I'm going to explain. Creation connection. Those words that were given from our passage, make man in our image. All of creation, all of creation created to point 
all towards God. Man in our image. Let us make man in our image. You know, can I take a side road, okay? Stay away from the Holy Trinity mindset. But this side road, I promise you, it will make a pathway clearer to the path that I'm trying to give to you. Basic biblical truth. Let me make a side road. A side road is this. When someone reads this, make, let us men make in our image. Sadly enough, that sentence could be taken as failure or good future for men. What do I mean? You know, you will hear, and I, and I thought I heard this in the past, and I'm not going to name names to put them down, but there was actually a teaching on this that says, see, man was created first. I thought that was a mistake because when God said, let us man make man, make man in our image, the sentence is not regarding patriarchal rights. This is more on responsibilities. Because if you will read carefully the next line of this passage, it says, look at it with me carefully. Then God said, let us make men in our image according to our likeness. Did you see the next sentence? Let them have dominion. Who's them? Now, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. But I thought them is not just one. Because verse 27 will tell you, so God created man in his image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. Now, remember, this is a side road. And the side road that I'm trying to make a point. Ladies, when you read make man in our image, this sentence is not issue of equalization. This is an issue of Eden-like in nature. You see... You always need to go to a point where how the ladies or the women were created from the side of men. And so, men, if you are so used in talking to women like this, behind the great man is a great woman. I think there's something wrong with that. Because the right sentence should be beside the great Man is a great woman. Ladies, amen? <laughs> and I just don't see it. I just don't see a point where we are going to make this sentence as something about rights or equalization. And I told you this is a side road. So let me make my creation connection. Creation, created in the image of God, you and me. Here's my point. Any other image will miss the Holy Trinity. Any other image that you try to portray who God is. You see, we're having a hard time in understanding father, patriarchal, mother, so unequal with this equalization. And so when we go there, can you imagine if we're having a hard time, and that's why I use the home as the basis of me trying to understand it. If I try standing here at my home and telling my wife, this is my right. I was created first. You are below me. You could imagine what my 26-year-old and my 23-year-old would do. Because they too are going through Bible school. You see, that creation, and this is the point I'm getting at. When you and I explore the idea of you and I are created in the image of God, 
we will totally miss the powerful presence of the three in one if we don't have a point of reference what this is. And I'm going to refer to you all the time that you start with creation. Let me continue. From Deuteronomy all the way to the New Testament, to the apostles, you will find, you will find the greatest commandment repeated over and over again. What does it say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength. And I always thought, there's those three again. I wonder if we are having a hard time loving God with all because that mystery remained the mystery never connected to who we are and therefore inconsistent in our mind. And so this morning, if I am able to give you the basic biblical truth of the Holy Trinity, make a creation connection in your mind and make sure if you are a family man, you're practicing it at home. That's my basic bi biblical truth with regards to this. And so how is that going to make a connection, Pastor Ben? You see, I always thought with creation trying to connect it. In the past, we have tried connecting with animals. And you will see this. You could actually Google this. Even today, man is still trying to understand the language of whales, dolphins, and even dogs. Even dogs. You see, in their understanding, specifically with dogs and dolphins, it's, it's fascinating because they are coming close to really have, to really have an exchange or a communication exchange. And I thought, whoa. And it sounded like, it sounds creepy at all with the way we are connecting with animals even today. You will see this often. Sea World is the best where you could see people really interact or interacting with animals. But I always thought, I always thought, will there be a time that we can play Scrabble or chess with dogs or dolphins? I'm making a point here. I don't know if that will come, Scrabble or chess with the animals. You know why I'm trying to connect that to your mind? Because of this. God in Jesus Christ, all-knowing, all-powerful, created all. The most powerful, the only one in the whole of the universe became a person in Jesus Christ so that he can connect to his beloved creation like you and me. God the creator, God in Jesus Christ in flesh. Emmanuel, you can imagine how far God went down just so he could express to you, I love you. Philippians 2, perhaps, is the best passage that you could go to in trying to understand that God himself denied himself to be a God in humility so that he could reach out to you. God the creator. God in Jesus Christ. Through the Holy Spirit as a real person today. That's how much that mystery meant to us. And missing it from the very beginning as the creator. You will not go as far as the person next to you. That's why there's people today, I'm alone. Well, as a Christian, you're never alone. Because the Holy Spirit is with you, in you, and he will never leave you. The Trinity, if there is a part where it can be 
creation connection into my mind in its biblical basic form, humanly constructed possibly best that I could give you today is this. The Trinity is God's way of making a clear connection to our whole being. Not just mentally, not just emotionally, but with all of our being and the three connecting us. That's why when you're having a hard time connecting in the mind, connecting it to your heart and connecting it to your movement, you need to know, God, reveal to me more of your mystery because I want to be moving. I want to be loving. I want to be thinking the way that you do. It's a hard task. But for us to get to that point, we did try trying to grab hold onto that. It's him who went down for God so loved the world. He gave his son so that you and I, we just want eternal life. But when he went down, John 10, 10 said, it is to give you life and give it to you today abundantly. The Holy Trinity represents that as well. So this morning I brought to you consistency, creation, connection. Let me end. The third one, clarity. So one, consistency. Two, creation, connection. And third, clarity. And when I say clarity, there are things that are seemingly hopeless and impossible. One of them is the Holy Trinity. I will be the first one to admit, I'm glad it's being recorded. I don't think I will come to a point of conclusion of this. But I will journey on until I see the three in one face to face. I will keep on. I will live on. I will not just exist. My whole being, my mind, my, the way I love and the way I speak, I will make sure it's connected to the mystery that I hold on to dearly. And so clarity, the three working as one, God's way of being creative. You see, whenever I look at that passage, then God said, let us make man in our image. The New King James Version added this, according to our likeness. That really fascinated me. Because there was a clear connection of what God is trying to do. And here it is. Let me express it to you, Pastor Ben's style. The Father. The Father have chosen people for himself to preserve creation. Noah, the only righteous man that God preserved because no one else wants to believe him anymore. And so for 100 years, one person was saying, the rain is coming. Imagine if Noah was not preserved by the Father. Moses, 40 years of being a prince, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years of freeing God's people so that you and I can live today. Looking back, how God's people were preserved in the past. Abraham, the father of faith. He's, a call, he's called the father of faith, but he went ahead of God, taking concubines so he can continue his legacy. Isaac, his favoritism. Really, his story created chaos in Israel. Because Jacob was his favorite. And Jacob, a stealer of birthright. David, a murderer, morally failing. Elijah, thought of suicide. 
These are people God chose, the Father, so that today we can read, whoa, people like them, chosen by the Father, God the Father. And you know, ladies, I did not forget about you. You can read of Tamar, of Rahab, of, uh, of, of Bathsheba, of Ruth the Moabites, of Mary Magdalene. Two of them a prostitute, one a concubine. And these are men and ladies that was protected. And it's so clear that God have made a way just so his people will say, man, that mystery. I think we have gone to the mystery of, I don't understand you. And meanwhile, he's going, here's the people who did not understand me, but I made them and I preserved them so that today, May 2, 2021, we could still say the Holy Trinity, I love. It all started with the Father. And did not stop there. The clarity of who Jesus is. I thought I'm already having a fascination about the Father. But then there, here comes Jesus. Bethlehem of all the place to be born. This is in the boonies of nowhere. Why not Jerusalem? He didn't choose Toronto or Vancouver, the most beautiful cities in Canada. He's chosen Hope, BC. You can Google it where it is. And if you're from Hope, BC, I'm sorry. It's not a put down either. But Bethlehem, born in a manger. First visitor, shepherds, the nobodies. And of all the people who will visit him, you would think intelligent people, astrologers. The job description that he chose, carpentry, carpentry in the Middle East. And then the choice of his followers, traitors, backstoppers, denier, rebels. No one was there when he's being crucified. You see the clarity, the father, Jesus. And then his teaching, Jesus' teaching. Want to be rich? Got to be poor. Want to be great? Got to be the servant of all. When you're weak, that's when you are strong. His death, cross, that's for criminals. He sits from the heaven as majestic in worship. And you know where we put him? Between two criminals. Easter. This is the Father. This is Jesus. The clarity, their consistency, their connection. There is no mark of lies or doubt that they are one. And then there's the Holy Spirit. And then he said, while I'm going, Jesus said that this counselor will only speak of what was already done by Jesus. Will only make known what the Father and Jesus has spoken, done and accomplished. He's a real person today. That's my basic biblical truth for you this morning. With regards to the Holy Trinity, its consistency, its creation connection, and its clarity. I wish I could go in details to each one of those to you because it will take Genesis all the way to Revelation to do that. This morning, I pray that I stand before you accountable to the truth of the Word of God. Young men and women, of your church, of this church. Hold on to this mystery. Hold on to your faith because more than ever, we are being tested. 
We are being tried how true we are to stand in this kind of commitment. The three in one at work in my life. And I pray that we will simply hold on to this truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I lead you in prayer? Our Father, thank you for your son, Jesus, who made sure we have a clear understanding of what God the Father have done from the beginning of time. Spirit of the living God, refresh, renew, be the person next to us even today so that the teaching of Jesus will not be something out of historical that we will have in our history out of, out of our mind, but it is actually the true one person beside us who will reveal, divinely reveal to your people who you are from the very beginning of time. Reveal yourself powerfully to us this morning, to me first. When there are things overwhelming in my mind with this pandemic, with this vaccination, with this fake news that are going on, with all of this inconsistency, Lord, help us to hold on to the truth of who you are. Lord, I pray for this church in the midst of pandemic lockdowns. I pray that we will stand true to the calling that you have given us. Stand true to what we believe. Faithful until we see you face to face and totally understand the Holy Trinity. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.